What happens to your eternal soul mm -hmm. when you die? I think it rejoins his creator. It's part of his creator. That is what I believe. Why do you believe that? What's that? Why do you believe that? I believe that because I believe that God resides already in each of us. I think we're all made in the image of God. We are equal. Our equality on this earth is derived from one thing. It is the fact that, not because we made it up and wrote it down on a piece of paper. I love our founding fathers. But they were just writing down what is true in a way that is far, came long before them, and is true long after they're gone. Because the reason we are equal on this earth is that we are each made in the image of God. That is what gives us our equality. And I believe we're instruments on this earth. God put us here for a reason. God works through us. Yep. It's not being done by me. It's being done through me. It's being done through us. And I think that we're put here for that purpose. And I think that that is what happens even after our, own, after our role as an instrument is done. We rejoin our creator. That is what I believe. And I just think that these are taboo conversations. Right, we're not supposed to talk about this in an open, you know, maybe at, maybe at church on Sunday, maybe at the synagogue, maybe at the temple. But today, I, I grew up in a generation, I'm part of a generation now where God is a four-letter word. Imagine if most of us did believe in something bigger than ourselves, God. How about even a nation bigger than ourselves? Do you think we'd be as badly divided today as we are? No, we would not. And it's not an accident that our founding fathers saw it the same way. John Adams, what did he say? Our constitution was made for a moral people. Right? It's an operating manual, but you need a moral foundation to use the operating manual. And so that's something that I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to single-handedly fix that as the president of the United States. In fact, that's not the main role of the president. I'm running not for pastor-in-chief, but commander-in-chief. But it's important that we embody those values, even in the way that we lead this country. It's important that we fight the war back against the assault on religious liberty in this country. And so my job can't be to create a revival of faith in this country. That's going to have to come from people of a higher pay grade in more important roles than the U.S. president, starting with pastors and parents alike across this country. That is what it's going to take. It's not coming from on high from the White House. But what I can do is to end the quiet, cold war on religious freedom and religious expression, because that is coming from on high from Washington, D.C., and that much we will put an end to. That is my role to play in this. Thank you for that. I appreciate it.